Hello friends, welcome back to Scientific Blunders, where you learn the don'ts first. So today, I am going to explore a physical interpretation of linear regression. So this is not the traditional way that linear regression is taught, um, but it is definitely going to give you a very, very unique perspective um, of a concept that is traditionally taught in a more statistical, mathematical way. And also, this video assumes that you have a basic understanding of linear regression. So if not, I encourage you to watch one of the many, many, many videos on linear regression out there and gain a better understanding of the basic concepts uh, of linear regression. And then you'd be able to appreciate this video much better. So having said that, let's get started. Um, I have three different cases that I want to discuss today. So let's go uh, step by step. So let's consider ordinary least squares, right? So ordinary least squares is the vanilla form of linear regression, right? And like I mentioned, um, for those of you who are already familiar with ordinary least squares, you are finding the line of best fit, right? And typically that is obtained by minimizing the sum of squares of residuals, right? So this is all very standard conventional um, wisdom. But today we are going to think of linear regression, not from a mathematical or statistical standpoint, but more from a physics um, standpoint, all right? So assume that this is the point cloud, right? So typically a point cloud would contain hundreds or thousands of points, but we're just looking at one, two, three, four, five, six points. Assume that each of these points has a spring concentrated in it, all right? And you are essentially stretching the spring out from the point and attaching it to the line of best fit, right? So what is the length of the spring? Well, we also assume that the spring has a natural length of zero, right? So the spring is basically like a point spring that is concentrated at this point. And we're going to stretch each of these springs um, and attach it to the line of best fit, right? And what is the length of um, the spring now? Well, it is just the residual of this point, right? The residual is defined as the um, vertical distance between the point and the line of best fit. So let's say, let's say this is point number one, point number two. So this is residual three. Similarly, um, let's say you stretch the spring that is concentrated in this point and attached it to the line uh, of best fit. So this is our residual four. And similarly, you have R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, and R6. And my question to you is, based on your understanding of physics, what is the potential energy um, in all of the springs? Well, the potential energy in one spring is or in the first spring, let's say the spring that is here, that's R1. Similarly, this is going to be R2, R3, R4, R5, and R6. So I hope you get the idea. Or let's just say this goes all the way to N. So this is like the nth point. So this is going to be Rn. So the potential energy in the first spring is half K. Let's say K is the spring constant of the first spring. And let's also say that k is the spring constant of all springs. So all the springs in this case have the same spring constant k. Okay. So what is the spring, uh, what is the potential energy in the first spring? Well, it's half k r1 squared. And what is the potential energy in the second spring? And that is going to be half k r2 squared. And all the way, to half k r n squared, assuming there are n points in the point cloud. And so this can be written in more compact notation as half k, the sum of the residual square, where i goes from 1 to n. 
so that you sum the residuals for all the n points in the point cloud. Now, um, let me just move this a little to the side. Now, what we want to do is, so right now the line of best fit has not been decided yet. This is a line at an arbitrary location, but we want to choose the line of best fit such that you minimize u. So you minimize u to choose the line of best fit, right? Oops, okay, to choose the line. Now, to minimize u, you want to minimize half k, the sum of the squares of the residuals. And remember, k is a constant, right? k is the same for all of the springs. Um, it doesn't matter what k is, but given that k is the same for all of the springs, minimizing u is the same as minimizing um, r squared, right? And so this is probably, um, for some of you, this may be an entirely new way of looking at it. But what we have to realize that minimizing the potential energy in the springs achieves the same result as what we said earlier. We wanted to minimize the sum of squares of residuals and so uh, what we are minimizing by minimizing the potential energy in the springs is just minimizing the sum of squares of residuals. So think of the line of best fit as the line that somehow is optimally selected such that you can minimize the potential energy in the springs. So I hope that um, gives you one fresh perspective of linear regression and that is actually the point of this video. So the key takeaway is that in general um, this applies not just to linear regression but in general in anywhere in mathematics if you come across the form x squared you know multiplied by a constant k and okay let's also say this a half but if not you can multiply and divide by half. If you come across anything of this form um, in ma anywhere in mathematics, it can be visualized using springs. So remember, you don't even need to have the constants up front. It's the x squared that really matters. So anywhere in mathematics where you come across a variable square, um, think of springs immediately. And I uh, believe me, that is going to transform your understanding of the concept. And with that, I've actually almost completed whatever I wanted to in this video. And before I finish, I just wanted to draw your attention to two subtle points that we actually overlooked in case one. And hopefully these are going to give you um, some directions for further reading after this video. So when we chose the line of best fit, let's say this was the line of best fit, right? Did you notice that I uh, actually overlook the fact that there are different ways to attach the spring to the line. You know, we attach the springs vertically to the line. And so that ended up minimizing um, the sum of squares of residuals. But that wasn't the only way to do it, right? What about a case where we minimize not the vertical, you know, not the energy in the springs in this vertical configuration, but what about when we just, um, attach the springs to the line of best fit, not vertically, but such that you actually minimize the uh, distance from the point to the line. So what about when we have springs attached, you know, this way? So what, what does this lead to? Is this the same as ordinary least squares that we looked at here? Or is this something else? So I encourage you to pause the video here for a second and think about what this is going to um, mean. And, you know, these are all, I hope you're done pausing the video and thinking about it. So these are all, you know, each of these topics, even linear regression, you know, can be studied in a great amount of detail. So the purpose of this video is just to give you some direction on what to read. But this is related to a concept known as principal component um, analysis or PCA it is as it's commonly called and I hope this gives you some idea about 
what PCA is. Um, and by no means am I saying that this is the same as principal component analysis. We haven't even discussed this. But hopefully now that I've told you, you know, given you a no, new term to read about, hopefully that gives you some direction on um, next steps. And the third case that I want to discuss is when we considered the line of best fit again, what we did was, you know, again, I'm going to have to redraw this. We assume the springs to be vertically attached. So I'm going to assume that again. So that is similar to what we assumed, right? So vertically attached springs, but another assumption we made is that all of the springs had the same spring constant, right? Why, why did we have to make that assumption? So let's consider the case where, you know, there's the first residual, second residual, all the way to the nth residual. And let's say each of these springs had a different spring constant. So let's say the first spring had a spring constant k1, the second spring had a spring constant k2, and the nth spring had a spring constant kn. So now we are actually going to minimize, again we are going to minimize the potential energy, the sum of the potential energies in all of the springs. So that's going to be half k1 r1 squared um, plus half k2 r2 squared all the way to the end. So that's going to be half kn rn squared. And again, writing this in more compact notation, this time we end up with a slightly different form of the expression. So we have half ki ri squared, where i goes from 1 to n. Now, remember, in this case, we just minimize the sum of the squares of residuals because k, does, k doesn't matter here. k is a constant across all the springs. However, in this case, we are actually weighting each point by k. Okay, so again, to go back to a more physics based interpretation, what is the spring constant of a spring? So the spring constant, so f, the force that you apply on a spring is the spring constant times the displacement, right? So, or in other words, the spring constant is the ratio of the force applied to the displacement of a spring. So a high spring constant is one where a lot of force is applied for very little displacement or in English, a very stiff spring. Okay. And a low spring constant is a very stretchy spring. So given that we are weighting each of these points by Ki, essentially a higher Ki refers to a stiffer spring, right? And a stiffer spring is going to have a very high potential energy when stretched. So let's say this spring is very stiff, right? So it's going to take a lot of energy to stretch this all the way to the line of best fit. So this point is going to have a very high weight. If, you know, here we said all of the springs had the same spring constant, but if each spring had its own spring constant, um, the points which, which have very stiff springs are going to be weighted, correct? And can you think of a scenario where this might be useful? Um, instead of just assigning equal weights to all the points, uh, I encourage you to pause the video for a second and think about, you know, just, just let your imagination run wild and think about some case where it might be beneficial to have different weights for different points. So hope you're done thinking about the video, uh, excuse me, thinking about this question. Um, it turns out that what we're discussing is not a novel concept, but it's actually something that's been um, explored in great detail and although this is not the same as what I'm going to say, at least you have some sense of the idea of weighting points locally, right? And so I encourage you to read about um, the idea of locally weighted linear regression. Right. So I am almost um, out of time and just a quick review of what we did today. So first we assume that you have some basic understanding of linear regression and we are basically just trying to think of, of a physical interpretation of linear regression. So ordinary least squares is nothing but minimizing the potential energy in springs that are attached vertically from the point to the line of this fit. 
principal component analysis is um, not the same. So none of these are, I'm not going to claim that any of these are same, but it is similar to attaching the springs, not vertically, but um, along the perpendicular, along the normal to the line. And third, instead of assigning the same spring constant to all of the springs, if we assign different spring constants, um, which means we are weighting different points differently, then we are actually um, doing something like locally weighted linear regression. So I hope these new concepts or terms give you some direction um, on what to read about. And like I mentioned earlier, so there are so many possibilities for visualizing mathematics using physics. So I encourage you to keep um, thinking about these uh, parallels that you can draw, especially when you come across things like x squared, your mind should immediately uh, go back to the idea of springs. And I hope this gives you a fresh perspective of linear regression. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.